Today we're going to demonstrate how to simulate voltage-driven AC reactors using 2D models. In a previous video, we showed how solenoidal coils could be accurately simulated using a rotationally symmetric model. But today we'll use a ferromagnetic core reactor, which because of its shape is more accurately modeled by a 2D simulation. Now at the right, I have a schematic drawing of the reactor and uh, the voltage source that will drive the reactor. We'll have a coil of 450 turns, which is wound on a ferromagnetic core. The effective winding resistance of the coil is 2.4 ohms, and it will be driven by a 120 volt, 60 hertz AC source. I have a 3D representation of the coil and the core, and I've made the core semi-transparent so that we can have a better view of the details of the coil. Now you'll notice I've made a note here that the length of the core is 1.25 inches. That's basically the stack length of the laminations. Now that's important in our 2D models since we're going to model a cross section, but the amount of voltage or back EMF produced by the reactor will be dependent on the length. In order to uh, make a 2D representation of this 3D structure, we have to imagine a plane that cuts through the essential geometry. And in this case, we can use the Z equals zero plane, and that cuts through the back edge of the core and also through the coil. And when we switch to a 2D display, we see the regions which will be used to create a 2D model. Now I'm going to switch to our 2D Orsted program and here I've opened the Physics Global Setup dialog box and you'll notice that I've already set the length to 1.25 inches. So even though this is a 2D model we still have to be concerned about the length in the third dimension. I have already assigned materials to the core. I haven't put any materials in the coil region because we're not going to be modeling the individual turns. We're just going to assume that it's a uniform current density. We'll just have to indicate the parameters of the coil. So to assign the coil, we go to physics, coil windings, assign coil. Now the program is asking for the resistance of the coil, which is 2.4 ohms, and it asks for the number of turns, which is 450. And now it asks for the input of the coil. We have to define both input and output regions in order to establish the sense or polarity of the coil. So we'll pick this region as being the coil input, and for the output, we'll pick this region. So now we have our coil, and in order to complete the model, we have to assign it to a voltage winding. So we'll go to Physics, Coil Windings, Assign Voltage Winding. Now the program is asking us to select coils and in this model we only have one but you could have a number of coils in series so we'll pick the coil we just assigned and now it's asking for the modulus and phase of the voltage source. It'll be a 120 volt source with a phase angle of zero. And now we can run the simulation and let's just quickly do a field line plot to show how the flux circulates within the model. This is basically what you would expect. There'll be, of course, some fringing flux outside the core in the third dimension, but that will be negligible. And now, since we assigned a voltage winding, let's calculate what current this reactor will draw at 60 hertz. So we go current winding, and we select our winding. And the message area says that the current in the winding is about 0.26 amps at a phase angle of almost minus 90 degrees. So that shows that though the resistance of the coil is 2.4 ohms, since the phase angle is close to minus 90, the reactants must be a lot bigger. I created a parametric to simulate the performance of this reactor over a range of frequencies. I went from a low frequency of 0 0.06 hertz all the way back up to the 60 hertz that we were just, we were just looking at. Now at 60 hertz, of course, the current is the 0.26 amps we saw at a phase angle of almost minus 90. And the reactance is actually close to 460 ohms, which of course is much greater than the 2.4 ohms of resistance. At the other extreme, a very low frequency of 0.06 hertz, now you're seeing a reactance which is only 0.46, which is now smaller than the 2.4 ohms of winding resistance. 
And as a result, the phase angle is now minus 10, much smaller than the minus 90. And the phase current, or the winding current, is actually much bigger now, too. It's almost 50 ohms, which is consistent. If you think of a 120 volt source, if it's driving a 2.4 ohm resistor with negligible reactance, then it should be about 50 amps. So hopefully you can see how being able to assign voltage windings and coils can be very useful for simulating these types of reactors.